Hey guys, it's Jake here, and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're going to do some brake pad replacements on this BMW 528i. Now, on these BMWs, it has what's called a powered electronic parking brake. A little bit more complex system than other cars, and so um, BMW will tell you you need a special computer to release that in order to do the job. But I'm going to show you in this video that you don't need this computer. Um, they start at $200 and go up real quick. And we'll show you a quick, easy hack to change the brake pads on this car without using a computer. Okay, let's take a look at the parts that you're going to need. I'll put a link in the description below to click on any of these parts. For the rear brake pads, we're going to use the Euro 1473. These are OEM equivalent, so they're not the actual OEM, but they're just as good. I had no squeal with these brake pads. And the second thing you're going to need is one brake pad sensor. This sensor gets eaten up as the uh, brakes wear, and that's what's giving you the signal in your dash that you need to break, uh, change your brakes. If this sensor did not go off, then you could probably reuse it. Sometimes they're brittle when you take them out, so maybe have one ready to go. Um, next, you're going to need a socket set for 17 millimeter lug nuts. You're going to need a socket for 13 millimeter for the pads, and you're going to need a 15 millimeter wrench in order to hold the back side of that uh, of that bolt for the pads. You also are going to want a piston compressor. This is very helpful in pushing the piston back out of the way. I would also have some blue Loctite ready for when you put those bolts back into place. And I would have a T30 and a T45 bit, and that's what's going to help you bypass the electronic parking brakes so you don't need the computer. Okay, now that you have all your parts gathered up, we need to get the car jacked up and the wheel off. If you have access to a lift, great, but you don't need one. I just used a normal uh, car jack lift, and I put a block of wood underneath it, and there's a lift point right in front of the rear right tire and there's one on the other side as well and you'll lift the car up and then you'll put a safety jack underneath that or a jack stand sorry and then I like to put the tire underneath the trunk area just as another backup so here's a nice clean shot of what you're going to be working with you can see this car doesn't have very much rust but if yours has more environmental conditions to go through you may need to use a hammer to vibrate the back of the tire a little bit to get it to pop off Okay, next you're going to move the brake sensor out of the way. This is only on the rear right um, for, for this exact change here. And you can take the whole thing off or just move it out of the way. And then you're going to put your wrench on that, on that nut. It's going to be very tight if your brake change has never been done before. And I just tap with the hammer to loosen it up. Once you know that you have it loosened up enough, you can use a wrench on the opposite side and a socket to remove the rest of this bolt. You don't even need to hold the other side to break it free. Once it's broken free, then you can use a wrench on the opposing side. I believe I'm using a 13 millimeter socket right here and a 15 millimeter really thin wrench. And I actually found that wrench, um, it was for changing out saw blades, but it's not a common wrench that you would have in your shop, so I'm going to put a link in the description below for the exact one that will work better for you. Um, you could also use some locking pliers, so I'll put a link for the locking pliers. You just can't fit a normal wrench. A normal wrench is too wide there. So remove the entire bolt on the top and the bottom. Okay, once that struggle's done, you can see the two bolts that you removed and they have blue Loctite, so we'll return that at the end. And now we're ready to slide the caliper out of the way. Oh, by the way, you'll see this orange uh, cloth rag here, microfiber, and I'm keeping that on top of the rotor because there's a, a shield behind it that's very sharp, so if your hand slips on one of these bolts, you can cut up your hand pretty well, so put some type of protection there. All right, now that the brake sensor is all out of the way, we're ready to slide out the caliper. Okay, after I remove that, I like to hang it with the bungee cord up to the shock coil, and that gives you a place to work on this. So next, we'll take the wiring harness, 
off this electronic parking brake and then we'll take a T30 and we'll remove two bolts and then what we're going to do is on this electric motor we're going to kind of twist and pull at the same time and that will bring the entire housing in half and right there is where you're going to use your T45 and you're going to spin it in a clockwise fashion by hand until it completely stops and that will give you the room that you need to put your caliper back on with the thicker newer brakes and that's what would cost a lot of money if you were to use a BMW style computer to make this happen. So this should save you at least $200 by doing it this way. Okay, once you've reached the stopping point on that, we're ready to put it all back. If it's dirty, you can clean it up a little bit and a little bit of a twist and a push at the same time. And you're gonna put your T30 bolts back in place I like to do it loose on both sides and then tighten at the very end. So you'll see me do it kind of half loose here. And then cinch everything down when you're all done. All right, next we're ready to take the old brake pads out and you can use it, uh, pull them out by hand here. And just set those aside because you're gonna use them in a little bit. And then I like to spray some brake cleaner real quick and then we're going to remove the metal brackets and replace them with the kit. They come inside the brake pad kit. If you want to reuse them, fine, but might as well just swap them for the new ones since they come in the kit. purposely um, showing you a lot of this. Uh, some people might cut it out, but I want you to be able to see how things go on and off without rushing you because the first time you do this, it's just easier to watch someone else do it. All right, there's your new brake pad. Keep it nice and clean. And it takes a little plane here to get it to go in. So you just kind of try several ways, several times and angles, and eventually it'll just slide right in nicely. There's one in the front, one in the back. Now, it's important to know that these are specific, so that one in the inside there should have a larger opening for the brake pad sensor. And here I did mess it up, but I put the wrong one in the back there, so I had to take it off and swap it for one that has room for the brake pad sensor. The kit does come with this grease here, and so you'll wanna grease the outsides of the pads, not the insides, and that will produce, uh, reduce brake squeal, and things like that. So be nice and clean about how you do it and only on the exterior of the brake pads. Next, I like to uh, take the cap off on the brake fluid because I'm gonna be pushing the caliper back out of the way and I think it just works a little better. I haven't used one of these caliper tools in a long time, so here you can actually see me using it wrong. What I should have done is take the old brake pads and put them back in place right there and use the old brake pads to help me create some space. Uh, instead, I just used a block of wood. So you'll op open that piston all the way as far as you can and that will give you the room to slide over the thicker brake pads. It goes in from the top down there and then we'll put blue Loctite on our bolts. We'll put our bolts back in place. We'll tighten those up really well. Again, you're using a 15 millimeter and a 13 millimeter socket. And then we'll reconnect our new brake sensor. And there's a wire harness, um, maybe about four or five points of where it is clipped onto the vehicle. It's pretty obvious, so trace it when you take it off and put it back in the same way. And then there's a picture of where the brake pad sensor is gonna click into place on the brake pad. 
on the interior brake pad and remember they are specific so that one will have a larger opening than the outer brake pad. Once you're done with your other side of the vehicle don't forget to tighten up your brake fluid reservoir. Okay now that we're all done take your time look it over make sure you tighten all the bolts the way you wanted and nothing's loose and then we'll carefully put our wheel back on and we'll torque those. I believe the torque on this vehicle, a 2013, is 100 foot-pounds, but you'll need to Google that specification. Next, we need to reset the service light indicator inside the vehicle. So let's jump in the car and reset that. And we're going to start off by pressing the start button one time. And you can see it does say service due. And we're going to press and hold this button. anything resettable is going to pop up. I already did the brake pad, so let's reset the brake fluid that I did the other day. I'm going to press and hold. Let go. It wants me, asked me to reset. Yes, press and hold. Here it is. Still holding. There you go. Reset successful. So that is how you reset brake pads. See right there oil, rear brake pads, brake fluid, everything's reset, very easy. One button on the instrument cluster. Okay, that's the end of today's episode. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. Don't forget to check out the links in the description below for all the tools and all the parts. In the end, this brake pad uh, replacement cost me $120.